This is the Four Wheel Parts Down and Dirty Show Off-Road Edition, powered by Polaris Razor. We're taking it back to the roots, getting dirty and covering all things off-road. Because pavement, well, that's for <laughs> It's gloves off, in your face, on the edge, and the way off-road should be. We're your definitive source for all things dirt. Anywhere is possible. It's more than just a slogan. Anywhere is possible with General Tire's wide variety of tires for whatever it is that you drive. Whether you're looking for off-road capability balanced with impressive on-road performance or ultra-high performance offering all-season traction designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has what you need to get where you're going. General Tire, providing anywhere is possible with a down and dirty radio show since 2012. Welcome to the General Tire Down and Dirty Show Off-Road Edition, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here, and uh, yeah, we are going to keep this one short, sweet, to the point. I uh, got a couple of a uh, couple of my good friends on the show today. We got Jim Co's Robbie Pierce, also runs the Trophy Drug. He's out at the Dakar Rally with Fastball Racing. He's going to be on the show. They're also a big sponsor of the Park 425. And uh, we've also got Brian Folks with Best in the Desert, one of the head guys over there at Best in the Desert. Uh, they're going to be telling us, uh, I don't know, pretty much everything, uh, you know, around the Parker 425 and what's in store for us in 2020 with Best in the Desert. So thanks to all of you for joining me. Go over to iTunes, hit the subscribe button to the show. Much appreciated for everybody who has. If you haven't already, please do that. Please hit that rating button. It helps us out a ton. One through five stars. Won't tell you how to rate us. Just tell you, please. Drop us a rating. I'm at Jim Beaver 15 on social media. And, uh, yeah, along those lines, check us out at downanddirtyshow.com. We're dropping all kinds of content. All that being said, we are going to take a short commercial break. I know you guys hate it, taking a commercial break the first five minutes of the show. But you know what? That's because we get it out of the way, and then you don't have to worry about them the rest of the show. Yes, that is right. We're going to take a short commercial break. We come back. It's going to be Jim Coe's Robbie Pierce. we got Brian Folks from Best of the Desert. Great interview coming at you right here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Show Off-Road Edition, powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you, but you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Anywhere is possible. It's more than just a slogan. Anywhere is possible with Jim General Tire's wide variety of tires for whatever it is that you drive. Whether you're looking for off-road capability balanced with impressive on-road performance or ultra-high performance offering all-season traction designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has what you need to get where you're going. General Tire, providing anywhere as possible with a down and dirty radio show since 2012. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to welcome a couple of my good friends to the show, uh, Brian Folks with Best in the Desert, uh, my good friend Robbie Pierce, who uh, is coming, uh, I don't know, spent, uh, spent a few weeks in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Robbie, I, I got to ask before we get into things, I mean, that, that's uh, how was that? You've raced the longest races in the United States with Vegas Torino. You've gone down and done the Baja 1000. Uh, how does any of that even – does it even come close to what happened at the Dakar Rally? Um, it is. It's really hard to explain. And, and as, as a TV viewer of Dakar and, and fan from afar like we always do, um, you always, you know, are a little skeptical but you know, about it. Like, yeah, they race 17 days, but there's, there's these liaisons. And, you know, you just – you kind of uh, discount it a little bit until you're there. And, 
And no, it's like racing the Baja 500 or the, you know, actually probably more related to like Vegas Reno. And it's like doing that every day, every day, um, except you're moving every day. So, you know, you, you start in one city and you've got this huge bivouac with all the setup, like say the Python, right? And, and then, and then you start your race and you finish and now you're in some other city, but you've got got all your you know uh support vehicles and everybody's there too so um i i forget what year it was when um best and desert did the three-day deal um it's kind of similar to that um but it's uh it's just a grind you you kind of just grind it out and and i thought there would be you know maybe we'd race 180 miles a day or something but no we're we're you know 460 kilometers right we're 500 kilometers it's it's just a grind and uh, i was actually pretty proud of bobby and i just uh, being a couple old fat guys and uh, um, but we held up pretty good we went into stage six um feeling pretty good uh, about what we were doing um just kind of holding our own and, and getting a feel for it so yeah. but it's an amazing amazing thing to be able to do it was like racing on and somebody said in one of the shows it was like racing on a, um, an alien planet um it was just so vast and so big um the canyons, the fires, the, you know, it's like at one point in time, you feel like you're in a giant Matomi wash, and the next minute you feel like you're racing through Monument Valley. Yeah. It was amazing. Well, and, you know, and we'll, we'll jump into things, and I know we'll uh, we'll grab Brian here in a second, um, but I, I wanted to ask one more question, you know, and, and this was going back a year when they announced this event was going to Saudi Arabia. I mean, immediately the entire world was red flags, you know what I mean? We can't go there. We can't do okay. this, but now – I mean, shifting gears, I mean, that country has made, it done a massive shift in just a short amount of time. And, I mean, it, it looked to me like it was just an amazing experience. You know, everybody was welcome with open arms. And I feel like the media spun things over there kind of in a direction where it really isn't. Well, exactly. Um, and or that, if, you know, I think more accurately so that it has been a big turnaround over the last year um, with uh, Saudi Arabia's um, – uh, project, I think they call it the 2030 project, where they're wanting to bring more tourism. Um, talking to one of the people in one of the, the small towns, they said this town looked completely different a year ago. They've spent a lot of money on infrastructure and highways and roads and things to try to get everything built up. But um, I, I've never felt as welcome in any place. And we had a little bit of apprehension going over there, but um, I've never felt as welcomed in any place in the world as I was there. The people, especially, um, you know, having the American flag on our T-shirts or, or uniforms or hats or anything like that, they, they immediately were drawn to us and, and, you know, wanted selfies and wanted pictures. And, and as uh, Kelly, my wife, said in one of her posts, you, you become – um, kind of a default ambassador for you know for for America, and you want to put your best foot forward. And and just in some of the, the you know the small encounters, Kelly had a small encounter with a, a young girl who wanted a selfie, but her father wouldn't let her. Right, um, and she respected that and would not. But as the girl walked away, she blew Kelly a kiss. Right, and you could just tell that 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 little girl is going to be changed forever now because of it. Right. Um, and uh, so it was just an amazing thing. But uh, absolutely, they um, they love Americans over there. They they loved everybody. Actually, they were very welcoming. Um, and uh, you'd be out in a canyon racing, you know, still like 100 kilometers from anywhere, and there'd be uh, just like in Mexico, there'd be a bunch of locals standing up on a hill, cheering you on, and and uh, and with the cameras out. It was amazing. Yeah. Well, and I know uh, we'll bring Brian folks in here, but I, I, I know you, you mentioned that I, I can say, you know, I guess, you know, Vegas Torino runs through some of the most remote stuff in Nevada that I think we, you know, some of the most remote areas we've got in the country, you know, Alaska aside, but uh, I, I can say I see the same thing at Vegas Torino. We'll be out in the middle of nowhere and then all of a sudden there's going to be a car and some people sitting on the side of the road. I'm like, wait, one, how did they get there? And two, what are they doing? You know, uh, but I'm sure uh, I'm sure yeah. you've experienced some stuff, Brian, uh, you know, just going through the backwoods of Nevada. Um, yeah, well, you know, no, no, Nevada is a very vast land and it's actually <clears throat> has more mountain ranges in the state of Nevada than I think the next four or five states put together. So there's a lot of vastness in, in Nevada. And, you know, Crazy enough as it sounds where where you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere in Nevada, the reality is is the way the course lays out and we have to stay as close to the highway as we can due to pits and whatnot, you're really not that far off of civilization, but Nevada certainly can make you feel like that because of the vast mountain ranges and, and the valleys and whatnot. 
Yeah, well, I know. Uh, I would have to. What's that, Robbie? You know, I'd absolutely agree with that. Yeah, Brian, if you could introduce some camels in there, we, we, we'd have it all covered. <laughs> that would be uh, um, is kind of one of the things I you know, had to get used to is, you know, watching out for herds of, of camels. And, and I had, uh, when I was uh, there, when they were, you know, giving us some tips, they said, you know, always follow the camel tracks. And I, I had to laugh because it was something I'd never heard before in desert racing. So, but, uh, um, yeah, it, is, it has that same vastness and same feel to it. Yeah. So all that being said, I know uh, Parker 425 this weekend, uh, Jimco, Robbie, your company. Well, you've been involved with the 425 for a long time. I mean, with Impact, when you own Impact, now shifting gears, and, and Jimco's kind of taken over that uh, that presenting partner role in it. Uh, but, uh, Brian, I know, you know, as we kind of get into that, you know, Parker, you know, things changed a little bit this year. You guys moved the date up to uh, – to, to hopefully uh, you know bring in some more uh, some more unlimited truck entries where there's not a uh, you know a, a kind of a conflict like we've had in the past, but I got to tell you I got to give Best of the Desert credit because kind of the smaller event has become almost the bigger event here in Parker. What was it? Two hundred and ninety five entries at the Parker two hundred and fifty last weekend. Yeah, two hundred two nine. I think two ninety. 295, 296 left the start line. We had 310 entered, but we had a, you know, obviously those other other small group of teams had to pull out. But that is officially the biggest entry we've, we've ever had for the Parker 250. And um, I think, like you said, Jim, it, you standing back, you, it was obvious that 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 you know the 250 itself is actually gaining traction, and it's a. Uh, it's a big it's a big event for the UTVs, the motorcycle guys, the quad guys. It's growing into a bigger event every year and and you know our our entry count was definitely um indicative of that. Yeah. Well, and I know just the buzz around Parker's been everybody's kind of like, "Whoa, what just happened?" because it had the feel around town of uh, the Parker 425 and the Parker 250's never really had that feel before, but everybody was going like, "Wow, this is like this is a big deal, and even uh, th- there was a lot of uh, you know I think uh, you know sponsors, industry companies, and stuff that came out to the event. They didn't necessarily vend because in the past it's been smaller, and all of them were kind of that I've talked to. All looked at each other and go, "Wow, we, we this is on our calendar next year. We we need to be all in with this event because it was just weird, like a year to year shift. I don't know if we've ever seen that in an event before, and this one's slowly been growing. But this year, I felt like. Bam! I mean, it's on the map. It's like a, a must-attend event now. It is, and I think actually, Jim, there's there's two things in play that are that are that are helping create that. Number one, I think we at Best in the Desert are doing a lot better job with our marketing and our advertising and social media and whatnot. So, you know, going we we started a, a plan about a year ago. Actually, it, it started talk about a year and a half ago we started implementing a year ago and everything has just come together it's been a long process uh, a lot of work but our advertising and our 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 promotion of of each event um really kind of came out with with the parker 250 so that had an effect and then the second effect jim is is the utv the utv market is the fastest growing segment of our market and um, it just keeps growing, and and you know you're you're seeing it with specifically with the Parker 250 because it's a, it's a UTV event, whereas the 425 coming this weekend is just cars and trucks. Yeah, well, you know, like you said, I think it's it's really taken the industry by storm. I know Robbie can attest to this, and I think sometimes he's shaking his head in the past, going, "Wow, this is <laughs> this is really a thing, Robbie." But uh, you know. I, I mean, I was just looking. I mean, we have the Serapis. Uh, the Serapis is here, and they've got an investment. They're building an unlimited UTV. And, uh, you know, I, I know Rob yep. McCachron's got his kids racing UTVs. And, uh, you know, you from a, a safety standpoint and things like that, I know at Impact you started developing UTV uh, eccentric, you know, products. But even at Jimco, I mean, you guys got to be selling, uh, you know, quite a few. Uh, you know, I know uh, in addition to building, you guys have the retail side of things now. And I got to thank you. You got to have pro- quite a few UTV customers on the on the safety side of things now. Oh, oh, absolutely, and it's it's what we found. You just can't ignore that market, no matter how hard you try, right? And and um, and it's here to stay, and it's bringing in more and more people into the industry. And and I don't want to say it's a feeder class because it's only it's its own deal, but it's a it's a, a it's a point of entry for a lot of people to get into off road and then to grow into you know hopefully end up in you know spec trucks or trophy trucks or 
class one unlimited cars or or whatnot but it's a you know um it's a great um way to get new people in and it's grown so much that you know organizations like dust and desert have had to add at, you know second days and and more events to you know to, to you know to fill that need so i i think it's all great i think it's great for the sport um we saw it over in dakar i mean the the popularity of the utv classes um over there with blade and and mitch guthrie and then you know casey curry did a phenomenal job i had much respect for him for for grinding that out for 12 days and taking that win it was pretty amazing um the bike guys are of course studs but um it was ricky and and toby price but uh you know, the UTVs are here to stay, that's for sure, with a, with a big part of it over there as well. Yeah, I laugh you mentioned Toby Price because I've told Toby for the longest time, I said, yeah, you're an Australian, but I said, we claim you. I'm like, you're, you're, you're an American, buddy. I said, everybody yeah. here roots for you. I said, you can say you're an Aussie, but you're really yeah. not. <laughs> yeah, Toby's awesome. I, I had the opportunity of meeting him down in Adelaide when I raced with SFT, and, and he's just a stud. He really is. He's I always likened him to uh, Tom Hanks in the movie Big. He's just a big kid, right? Just having fun. So, um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, it was it was pretty good. But no, the you know the Parker 425 is just an iconic race. It's a legacy race, and and you know um, as I said as you said earlier with uh, you know we sponsored it with Impact, and we just feel it's really important if we're if you know we're in this industry and and we're part of this industry as a legacy company like Mastercraft or. Of course, Jimco, we need to give back and we need to support the um, the people like Brian and, and Best in the Desert that, that give us an avenue in which to go out and race. You know, um, that's a tough, tough industry to be in. And, and uh, so we as a manufacturer need to need to support that and, and keep and make sure that there's always an avenue and an arena for us to race in. Yeah, well, and Brian, you know, that being said, I know, you know, you guys have, have made a, you know, Parker, like we said, it's been an iconic race. I think we were doing the math here, and I think we're maybe a year away from, uh, we're getting really close to having the 50th anniversary of the Parker 425. Um, it's getting really close, but you guys kind of made a big investment, a big change this year. I know a couple of years ago, due to safety concerns, you split the race up, and there was a morning race and an afternoon race. This year, you guys went even further, and it's a two-day race, racing on Friday and racing on Saturday. I mean, you know, that's a big statement for an organization like Best in the Desert to take on that expense, but do it on behalf of the racers to make things even safer. Um, absolutely, absolutely. It was it was actually, we started talking about this about three years ago, right after my dad passed away, and, and we knew we had an issue. I personally knew it was an issue because I was still racing at the time. I was racing with Danny Motorsports. And um, it was a really big deal for Banning. When I first started racing with Banning, there was just one, one day, one race, one day. And uh, teams like Banning, they would come out, they would get a big giant tent, and, and they'd throw a big party after the race and do a big cookout. And uh, it was really a, a really good time. And then eventually my dad, because of the amount of entries, had to push it to a two-day race because literally – the last year was just one race. The, the 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 leader was coming around off of off of the first loop when the last guy was leaving the start line. So the trick trucks, these guys were these guys within one or two miles of the first lap were catching already lapping people, guys who just left the start line. So that's why my dad switched it to a two two race in one day event. But what happened is because a lot of the, the bigger teams, you know, they were racing in the second race. Well, they're not finishing until 11, 12 o'clock at night. So that kind of took the whole fun aspect because, you know, Par Parker's typically, the, you know, it has been and it is now. It's the kickoff event for, for car, truck, off-road race of the season. And a lot of teams make a big deal about it. And, and what happened with the two, two, two races in one day, you know, you were taking that whole camaraderie aspect away from the race. So we knew we had an issue, and, you know, for an organization, our problem, you know, we, I get this a lot, well, why don't you do two days of race, or why don't you do this, why don't you do that? Nobody ever stops to think how many volunteers are out on that race course. We're already asking them to be there basically from sun up to sun down, and then now you're asking them to do that on a two-day basis versus one day. So it was, you know, we really had to give it a lot of thought. Was it the, At the end of the day, we think it's the right thing to do for the racers. Um, and I think it's going to go off great. Uh, you know, we're going to have uh, Friday's day of racing is going to be great racing. Um, then the next day we'll have racing. But in between the Friday night, I think we're going to see a lot of camaraderie 
and and things happen with race teams that that we haven't had in the past and you know at the end of the day it's 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 always about the racers but it's always about those teams and their support crews and making sure that those guys are getting a good uh good and you know a uh, good weekend of enjoyment and they're getting fulfilled and whatnot and i think by adding the two days of racing we hopefully will accomplish that yeah, well, and, uh, you know, I, I got to ask, Robbie, I know, uh, you know, you're just getting back from Dakar. You've got, uh, I, I feel like you've uh, you've almost had to sideline your racing career to an extent because uh, now all of a sudden your retirement job, which is Jimco, has become, uh, it's become a beast of its own, my friend. Yeah, it was a little poor planning on my part, right? Um, I, I ruined a perfectly good retirement, as I said. Um, I'm having a blast, though. Um, I, I felt uh, I felt as home here at Jimco as I've ever felt anywhere. Um, you know, uh, you know, I grew up right here in San Diego, uh, right in the Santee area. Um, you know, started my shop in 1981, about a block away from Jimco, and uh, started. Uh, I was TIG welding up chassis for you know John MT over at AutoFab and Steve Spearcoff, and so it's a little bit like coming home and. And at the end of the day, when we get to hand somebody a new car or a new pre-runner, it's the, you know that's the that's the big reward. The problem with that, and, and it's the lies you tell yourself when you do things, you know, buy race cars or or boats or whatever. But uh, the problem with it is, I thought, oh, we'll build some cars, I'll get to do a little racing, and you know, kind of towards the end of my career. But uh, you know, like anything else, the customers come first. So. Uh, I find that uh, my career runner and my race car are the last ones to get prepped. We want to make sure that uh, that our customer stuff is is race ready when they need it. So um, uh, we haven't quite got a handle on all that, but uh, but we're having fun and and uh, we had a great season last year and uh, with some new customers and uh, uh, we're looking forward to 2020 at uh, Best in Desert. Well, I, I got to ask you. We'll, we'll we'll ask the hard question. Is it? It's probably a little bit of both, but is it is it more gratifying to have your safety products, say, win the Indy 500 with Alexander Rossi, or is it more gratifying to have, say, one of your trucks win, uh, you know, uh, a marquee desert race? Uh, well, I tell you what, it's pretty close. Um, uh, uh, not to bring up a, a deal, but uh, last year, Met 400, when uh, um, uh, you know, uh, Justin Lofton won in, in Trick Truck and, and uh, uh, Park House won in the Unlimited. That was a pretty good day to be Jim Co. Um, I was pretty excited about it. We looked like geniuses, at least for a day. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, it's pretty hard to compare. Um, you know, I, had to, I always remember the time that uh, Antron Brown went into the wall at 318 miles an hour and, and two days later walked in um, with his suit that was, you know, half charred and signed it, and, you know, kind of a little tear in his eye. Just thanking, you know, thanking us for for building the safety equipment and for him being able to walk away, and that's that's pretty touching. It's hard to beat. So. Yeah. Well, and I know I, I ran it's, into him both at. Both uh, pretty... What's that? Uh, yeah. Go go <laughs> I was ahead. just gonna say I, I ran into Antron, you know, and it's funny you mention that. And I know you and Antron are close friends, and I ran into him at both PRI and at uh, the SEMA show. Every time I run into him, all he wants to talk about is off road racing. Here's one of the greatest drag racers on the planet, and all he wants to do is talk about coming and, and racing off road again. I know he raced the Razor with me and at uh, you know at uh, the Mint a couple years ago, but now you know I know you guys were working on a program to get him a 6100. He, he said, and it just didn't quite work out. But it, I got to tell you, you want to talk about off road, you know, biting people. Uh, him and Steve Torrance, those those two guys are, are yeah. case in point there. Yeah, exactly. They are they are bitten for sure. Yeah, we tried to get in last year. Um, we still are talking about it. It's, their schedules are just hard to to make that all work. But uh, yeah, he's he's Anton is just one of my favorite people in the world. I always tease him about. It. He asked me about. Says, "Can I race off road?" I said, "No." He said, "Why?" I said, "Because you don't know how to turn left or right, right?" So, um, but uh, they actually picked it up pretty good and did pretty well at the Mint that year. And so I think they're they're pretty excited about doing. But uh, Anton's got some new exciting things he's doing this year. So hopefully we can find some time to get him in on, in an off road race. That would certainly be great for him and the sport. Yeah, for sure. So, Brian, uh, shifting gears, I know this is a big year for Best in the Desert. Uh, you guys have, uh, you know, you guys have announced some uh, some new events onto the calendar. I know, uh, you know, you guys are, are kind of uh, some new partners coming on board. I mean, this is uh, this kind of I feel like this is kind of a, a turning point for Best in the Desert. You know what I mean? And and it's a it's a big big year for the organization. It it you uh, you Jim you you pin the tail on the donkey. It's a really really big year for us. It's the first year 
since I can remember going back, I don't know, eight, nine years ago, where Best in the Desert is promoting only our own properties. Um, that's a big deal. Um, like you said, we brought in, uh, we brought in a, a whole brand new event with the Battleborn 250, and then we brought back uh, the Blue Water Desert Challenge. Um, those are two events that, you know, we're, we're, we're hoping do well this year. But then on, on top of that, we had a lot of contract, uh, sponsor contracts expire at the end of this year. So we had to either renew contracts or we had to go out and find new sponsors because at the end of the day, in order for Best in the Desert to stay successful and profitable and all that good stuff, we need support from companies like Jimco. And Robbie, they, they, you know, we need their support. We need the dollars in order to, to grow the sport and grow our organization and, and get better for the racers. Um, so we had a lot of things on, 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 on tap. And then on top of it, we brought in a, a new uh, a PR agency and uh, hired a social first-time social media manager. Um, so we've, we've put the things in place that we need to do in order to keep our sponsors happy and continue to grow Best in the Desert and grow the sport. So we're definitely at a pivotal, pivotal, pivotal year. And, uh, you know, if, if the Parker 250 is any, any indication of what the rest of the year is going to look like, then we're in good shape. And so far we're looking good for the Parker 425. Entries are up. They're looking good. Um, we got a lot of things planned for this weekend and we're excited awesome well i am looking forward to it i know uh as we're recording this we've got qualifying uh qualifying tomorrow in the downtown experience and then uh um i know uh yeah i, I just after that it's all hands on deck all week long but uh i know robbie jim cole will be uh, a contingency and uh um i know you guys will be measuring for suits and uh trying to keep everybody safe and hopefully selling a still got a 6100 i think sitting in the garage for sale right <laughs> yeah we still do got a few of them for sale as, as they always say everything's for sale right yeah. so um but no we'll be there and and uh, hopefully everybody comes by and you know we'll tell war stories and you know share our experience in dakar and and uh i want to thank uh, brian we are we're really looking forward to being a part of the best and better program this year and uh we're excited for the series we really are and uh i think it's uh, it's, it's all a uh, all uh uh, all good for the whole industry. Well, I appreciate uh, both of you guys taking the time. Thanks for uh, yeah, thanks for calling in, guys, and we'll see you out here at uh, at Parker. Life is all about sound, the sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount and welcome back here to the general tire down and dirt show off-road edition powered by polaris razor thanks to robbie pierce and brian folk for coming on the show and uh yeah you know i, I guess that's uh, gonna be about it uh for today's episode uh you know we got the national show coming up to, uh, do want to make mention we got some badasses on that one we got toby price and we got colin braun 24 hours of daytona winner so uh definitely don't want to miss out on those guys and uh yeah it's uh always fun here on the down and dirty show having uh having these amazing guests and uh you know obviously our amazing listeners like you guys please go over to itunes hit the subscribe button or apple podcast i guess it's called now hit the subscribe button leave us a rating check us out at down show.com follow me at jim beaver 15 on social media and uh, we'll see you here next time on the off-road edition that's right we're being brought to you by general tire as well as polaris razor anywhere is possible it's more than just a slogan anywhere is possible with general tires wide variety of tires for whatever it is that you drive whether you're looking for off-road capability balance
Dallas with impressive on-road performance or ultra-high performance offering all-season traction designed with a driving enthusiast in mind. General Tire has what you need to get where you're going. General Tire, providing anywhere as possible with a down-and-dirty radio show since 2012. 